So what would you say is like a friendship red flag? It's a friend that would try to flirt with your wife. Okay. I got a friend that all the time I see broke with you, I know she ain't broke. Same friend. <laughs> when I got ready to get married, the bitch jumped up a wedding. I bought a dress for her. I was thinking that. That uh, Drake and Future song. Uh, where you asked was that? I take attendance like a classroom. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I take my friendships too seriously, but but I also think there's a deli- there's a there's a different perspective when it comes to women and friends and men and friends. Hey, I'm mm-hmm. Kayla. So I've always been a live and let live kind of girl. Partially because I know that in this lifetime, everyone has their own lessons to learn. And the other part of it is probably because I used to be kind of a people pleaser. I know. If you were my friend, it was because I saw the good in you and I really wasn't that scared of the bad. So because of that, I let a lot of things slide. And I always learned later that I probably shouldn't have. And so I'm sharing them with you because I don't think that you should ignore them either. Here are three red flags that I'm not ignoring anymore going forward in my friendships, both new and old. This one might sound a little crazy, but I promise you it's not. The number one friendship red flag I'm not ignoring anymore is that feeling of uneasy familiarity. Something that I've ignored more than once in the past was talking to somebody for a while and getting that feeling that they feel familiar. And I don't mean familiar as in my heart space familiar. I mean they feel familiar and I can feel it in my gut. You remind me of someone in the past who I know for a fact was jealous or envious of me in the past. This one's more geared towards new friends that I meet, but every time I've had this happen, I've almost always just dismissed it. I write it off like maybe they just have the same mannerisms or maybe I'm overthinking it. Because these people would look nothing alike, they would sound nothing alike, they would act nothing alike, but I still felt that way. This actually happened to me recently with some women in my building and I could not figure out why they reminded me of certain people. And so I ignored it and lo and behold, they go and do some weirdo stuff. And I've cracked the code. I found the pattern, like fool me once. Okay, Mm -mm, girl, I'm done. (laughs) Because every time they go and do it and I am surprised. Why was I surprised? That was an intuitive nudge warning me that something they did, said, or how they acted was a red flag and I ignored it, but no more. I'm on to it, I won't ignore it, no matter how lonely I get. (laughs) What's funny is that I asked some friends and family what their friendship red flags are. And none of them really said anything like this, but for the other two red flags I'm about to talk about, they also had similar experiences and they also had some that I didn't think about. So let's get in. The second friendship red flag I'm not ignoring anymore is lack of support. Now I think this one's a hot topic. I feel like this one's kind of debated. And I personally gave it the benefit of the doubt a lot. And that was until I started creating content. So when I started creating content on TikTok, I did it because I had this urge to pursue personal development and build community around that because I felt like that was what was lacking around me. So when I brought up what I wanted to do to certain friends, it was a little bit of like, oh, okay, that's cool. Some of them didn't really understand it. And I was like, that's okay. I kept it to myself. I started creating content. So in my mind, I was always like, people are busy. They have their own stuff going on. And I've always heard that your friends aren't your target audience. So I kept that in mind. As I started to grow on TikTok, I wanted to talk about it more, talk about specifically my content more because it was becoming like a larger part of my life. And I had one friend in particular who anytime I brought up anything about my content, TikTok, my ideas, I got this long speech as to why they didn't really get on TikTok and it kind of turned into a conversation that overshadowed what I was saying in the first place. And I let it slide because I get it. I wasn't asking them to like my stuff. I was like, okay, yeah, I understand. But after a while, this happened every single time. And honestly, I really didn't care. Like changing your eating habits and spirituality isn't for everybody. Like I was in this to find my people. I just figured they weren't my target audience, okay? One monkey don't stop no show. Here's why I say I'm not ignoring it anymore. When I told another one of my friends who also doesn't have TikTok, 
she said, oh, I don't have TikTok. I've never been on there. And then while we were on the phone, proceeded to download TikTok, make a page and follow me. And that changed something in my brain chemistry. And I started looking at all the other interactions that I had ignored as not a big deal. I literally sat with it, analyzed it, and asked myself why I didn't think I deserved friendships that would show me the same support that I would show them. Because I support so hard. I am a very loyal friend. And so at the end of the day, I came to the conclusion that I deserve better. I deserve friendships that are supportive in the same way that I am. I deserve reciprocity. And I'm not the only one that felt the same way. What's a red flag no. in friendships for you? No, it's friends that don't show up for you, but expect you to show up for them all the time. Mm -hmm. And or like always talk about themselves and never ask you, hey, or, you know, check in with you. I have everybody around that I care about or just, you know, whatever's happening and you're not around. That's like a big thing too. Like, if you ask for something, would she do it for you? Yeah, what you do for me? Yeah. Oh, okay, so she's not matching energy. Yeah. This is the last red flag I'm going to talk about here, but if you want other ones, you can check out the blog post that I linked in the description. But the third friendship red flag I'm not ignoring anymore is if you're not committed to your own growth. You don't always have to be the boss babe with all the goals, the vision board, the business plan. But if you're not committed to your own growth on a personal and spiritual level, it's just not gonna work out between us, babe. This one is very personal to me because I'm personally someone who is going to always be evolving in this lifetime. I don't have all these Scorpio placements for nothing, all right? And because of this, I feel like I can't have friends close to me that can't look at themselves in any sort of deep context. Associates are a different story. But I mean, someone who wants good things for themselves and isn't going to be afraid to try to overcome fear and isn't going to try to keep acting out of old wounds. Because let me tell you something, if they are not, they are either going to resent the fact that you can grow, change and evolve, or they are going to expect you to do the work for them. Babe, if you're about your personal growth, you just don't have that to do. You can't learn their lessons for them and you can't hold their hand and drag them through it. If you do that, you'll sacrifice part of your own growth in the process. It's just how it works. Personally, if you're going to stand next to me, you have to be able to stand on your own two feet. I'm not carrying anyone on my back. Now, these three opinions were specific to me, so I asked around to get other people's opinions on what red flags they're not ignoring in their friendships anymore. And their answers were interesting. Take a look, and for my own personal research, leave yours in the comments. Yes, when someone has a lot of best friends. Ooh. Or like, uh, if I see someone who's really selfish, and it's like their boy, you know, it's like, 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 it's like, do you take care of your people? Do you take care of your people? Dang. If they're telling you other friends information, then that means that they probably are telling your information to other friends. You tell them something that only oh, you know you told them, whether it's a true story or just something hypothetical or whatever, and that story comes back to you from somebody else. You know where your leaks are. They'll do it to someone else. They'll do it to you. If you they borrow a thousand dollars from you and have every excuse in the book not to pay you back or don't pay you back or or don't call you and explain the situation, yeah. then don't call them back. Don't chase them for money. That is mm. the amount that it costs you to get those people out of your life. Thanks for watching. Yeah. And if you liked this one, you'll probably like the video I did about why I don't trust my intuition in my Unlearn to Upgrade series. As always, I'm sending love and healing your way. Bye.